Hi everyone, I am Duango AC, Keeper of TaskBot, and I'm here for the SGQ 2020 TaskBot content. We are going to play Super Mario 64, as you see on screen. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you all, head on over to the Yeti.com right now. There's a Chimmy TaskBot t-shirt you can get. $5 of every shirt goes directly to Doctors Without Borders. So grab that shirt right now while you can. You'll have it ordered by the time we run, start the run. Uh, really quick, there's a huge team of volunteers. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. I'm going to pass it over to the person who actually organized this particular event. I'm just your presenter today. The main organizer was Taters, and he is on the line right now. Hi, everyone. I'm Taters, project manager for TaskPot, and with me is one Ted 59 Hi, I'm one Ted 59 I've commentated the SM64 task competitions for three years. I'm here with Taskbot. He's right here on this screen you can see right here. I have a visualization board you can see. This is actually a Super Nintendo type controller, but we have mapped the analog button presses thanks to some work at the last minute by Onosaurus. So you'll see the button presses for the controller on this screen. You'll also see the C-pad controller buttons show up where these four buttons are. You'll see an extra set of lights for C-face buttons. Now, a lot of people wonder about what a tool-assisted speedrun is. It's actually not too complicated. It's nothing more than a sequence of button presses made in an emulator that completes a game from start to finish as fast as the, the game can possibly handle it, removing human limitations of skill, reflex, luck, all of those characteristics. What we're doing is one step further. We are using TaskBot here to play it back on a real Nintendo console. And I think we're ready to go. You ready, One Ted? Yes, I am ready. I'm going to throw it over to 1TED59. We are going to start this run in 3, 2, 1, go. Hello, and welcome to the SM64 Shindo BLJ List Task Showcase. First off, here's a nice Easter egg. Look at all those Marios. You may be asking, what does Shindo and BLJ List mean? Well, in Japan, Super Mario 64 was a launch title for the Nintendo 64, but it was rushed and a bit buggy, with the most infamous glitch being the backwards long jump, also known as BLJ. The BLJ allowed anyone to trivially break the game. A year later, Nintendo released an updated version of the game only in Japan, called the Shindo Edition, that was released with Rumble Pack support. This version notably fixed the backwards long jump glitch. That's why this task is called Shindo blj -less, because it's being ran on the Shindo edition of the game and therefore cannot BLJ. But then how can we beat the game fast? We'll just have to wait and see. Coming out of this pipe at the beginning, it's our main protagonist, Mario. Our first goal of this task is to make it inside the castle. We can't land on the bridge or Lakitu will talk to us and that's slow. So we're going to do a massive double jump all the way over the bridge to enter into the castle. Next up, we have to enter into that star door on the top right of your screen. And the fastest way to do this is actually to enter into bob -omb Battlefield. That's right. There's a trick you can do if you get a lot of speed in certain states where Mario is moving and pause exit on very specific frames. You can actually conserve that speed into the lobby. So we're going to go up here, wall kick off of that fence and go up onto this white structure. See up slide, grab onto the edge of the fence, pause exit on the first frame you grab and conserve that speed into the lobby and enter into the first Bowser level. In the Bowser level, we're going to be doing dive grinds on the left side of the start to get a lot of speed very quickly. Our goal of here is to make it into the pipe at the end to be able to fight the first Bowser and get our key to downstairs. The fastest way to do this is actually to go up the pillar in the middle. This is a very new strat. Uh, we can use this Goomba to get a little mini extra boost, conserve that speed a little bit better, triple jump off this stairs at the end, use the sign, every piece of geometry, to make it into the pipe and fight the first Bowser. In this Bowser fight, there's a 10% chance Bowser does a little dance here. It saves a little bit of time, so we manipulate a Bowser to do that. Grab onto his tail and throw him into the bomb, and that is the first Bowser fight done with. Bowser drops the key to downstairs after we talk to him, of course. Right now, Bowser is blowing up, dropping the key, just like this bomb is blowing up. There's the key to downstairs. To get downstairs, we actually need to pause exit to be, able to be able to leave this Bowser level area. We can't go through the star door because we still don't have enough stars, so we're going to pause exit to be able to get out. This allows us to access back into the lobby, and we can just go downstairs and use this newly acquired key on the star door. 
But you may be wondering, how are you going to bypass this star door? We can't do the same pause exit trick. That'll just bring us upstairs. It turns out, similarly to the BLJ not having a cap on backward speed, when Mario's in the air, there's no cap on forward speed either. And if you press A on the first frame, Mario hits a wall with a wall kick. You can actually keep building up speed more and more in the air, allowing Mario to just go faster and faster to break the game. We carefully routed these wall kicks going all the way into this green area to be able to wall kick kick through the star door and enter into Dire Dire Docks. You may be wondering, why Dire Dire Docks? I thought we were supposed to be going into the Bowser level. It turns out it's actually faster to enter Dire Dire Docks because building up speed in the air is very slow. It only builds up a couple of speed each second. So it's actually faster to enter into Dire Dire Docks and to just unlock the Bowser level normally. In Dire Dire Docks, you might be noticing we're doing some crazy camera angles to try and reduce lag as much as possible. This is a very, very laggy area of the game. Even casual players realize how laggy this part of the game is. We're going to be jumping up the front of the sub here and collecting the one and only star we will be getting in this entire run. Now that we've collected that star, Dire Dire Docks will move back and we have full entrance into the Bowser and the Fire Sea level, getting in with a double jump dive. In Bowser and the Fire Sea, we're going to be doing more dive grinds on the left side of the start to get a lot of speed really quickly. Uh, the goal of this level is, of course, to get into the Bowser fight, mini upwarp. Gotta love that. So instead of going around the level normally, it's actually fastest to wall kick up these pillars, wall kick off of nothing, and then clip through the bottom of the Bowser entrance to get into this fight. And now for the second Bowser fight. This Bowser has the key to upstairs, the final area of the game we need. He starts off by doing a big jump, and unfortunately we can't reach his tail in time. We have to wait for the platform to level out before we can actually grab his tail. So we have a little bit of time to just mess around. There we go, grabbing his tail in the first frame possible and throwing him into a bomb for the second time in this run. This Bowser drops the key to upstairs after once again exploding into a giant cloud of sparkles. Mario grabs it, and there we go. Access to upstairs unlocked. Similarly to the first Bowser level, it is we actually have to pause exit here to be able to make it back upstairs. We cannot just walk back through that 30-star door because we only have one star. We have to go back to the level, pause exit, and that allows us easy access to the upstairs area. In this upstairs area, we're going to be doing the same wall kick trick that we did to just wall kick back and forth, gaining speed in the air after clipping through the ceiling, of course. So here we're going to start off with a long jump and continuously wall kick back and forth. So now's a really great time for me to hop in and say, if you want to be able to play back these Super Mario 64 runs or many other runs for NES games, SNES games, and other some other S uh, N64 games like Mario Kart 64, you can get your own replay device made by Onasaurus, the Tastium 32 board that I'm using here today, and do these in your own home. Just head on over to store.tas.bot to get your own replay device. We even have some t-shirts these days. So feel free to swing on over there and have a look. In the meantime, Mario's wall kicking so fast right now, you can see how fast he builds up this speed. He's really moving. And now we have enough to clip through the first of the star doors, wall kick off of TikTok clock, clip through the stairs, through the star door, and punch up the endless stairs to be able to enter into the final Bowser fight. That punch is 0 .04, 0 .004 units of precision uh, that we have extra there. But in the meantime, in this Bowser level, we're going to be abusing some oversights in the geometry to just bypass large portions of it. Look at this huge long jump coming up all the way over that gap. And a moving right side triple jump to be able to bypass all the way to the very top of the level already while kicking off of the little banister, long jumping around the wind, and we are into the final Bowser fight. I should mention, there is one other notable change that Shindo has made, the Shindo edition has. See if you can hear it, it's an audio change. In this fight, we need to grab Bowser and throw him three times. Bye bye Bowser. <laughs> three times in the bombs. Once we grab him the third time, the whole level will start collapsing, and all we need to do now is throw him into the final one, and of course, not fall off. Easy peasy, right? That was Super Mario 64 one-star blj list on the Shindo edition, and time's coming up as soon as we dive into the star to finish this run. Time. This run was made by MK Dasher, Dargoss, Dylan Stege, Plush, Super Devo 0001, Kai Man, Isaac A, Tyler Caney, Fifth Dispense, Fifth Dispense rather, Snark, RSWY, Manima, 
Tabasco, Atmapus, and Jongyan. And I have been one Ted fifty nine. And I am Duango AC. I'm gonna let Taters talk for just a second. I really want to thank 110.59 for commenting this run and Isaac A for submitting this run to TaskBot to take a look at. And the TaskBot Labs community itself, who I firmly believe are the hardest working community on the internet. If you like commented tasks like this, you should check out the SM64 task competition reveal streams that I have ran and uploaded on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash 110.59. And that's all the time that was allotted to us for this event. But don't worry, I'm sure we'll be able to come back and do something more once things become more normal. And I look forward to those days. If you'd like to join us, swing on by discord.tas.bot. It's a wonderful community with lots of support. Come on in and have fun. That's all we have for you today. Thank you so much. This concludes the task block for SGDQ 2020. <laughs>